Hello, welcome to episode 6 of the Milwaukee Brewers. We're going to cover 1981 and 1982 this time. Uh, the collecting world is really getting going here. Uh, new manufacturers, uh, the team is getting going too. Uh, we'll cover everything that's out there, but without cheerleaders this time, okay? Sorry. The 1981 Brewers had a tops issue of 30 cards. Lots going on. A 50-day uh, work stoppage split the season in two halves. The Yankees won the first half, the Brewers won the second half. Well, in the American League East. So that counts as a playoff uh, entry. The mini playoff against the Yankees, well, the Yankees won it. So the team looked a little bit different this year. Uh, Raleigh Fingers, Pete Vukovic, and Ted Simmons were added. Traded for Sixto Lascano, Larry Sorensen, David LaPointe, and David Green. Fingers won the Cy Young Award. Vukovic had 14 wins, which is tied for the most in the majors because of the short year. Uh, Jim Gantner finally took hold of the second base job. People assumed that he was a second baseman since the day he got here. He moved all over the place. They couldn't find a home for him because he couldn't hit enough, mostly. I mean, Paul Molitor moved to the outfield, too, that year. Top's update had five rookies to reflect the big trades. Uh, OPG had a smaller set of 17 Brewers. Uh, there were grayback and whiteback versions this year for OPG. A throwback from the 50s when Top's seem to let that happen often top since the beginning and through today has always given the printing job to two printers I assume OPG did also at least this year this is insurance against one printer having a problem like a fire and the product is lost well in the 50s they would give different stock to or at least they would use different stock in for each printer it just happened to work better in their machine or something so there was two different kinds of bags or two different kinds of stocks that really showed on the backs um so opg had this problem this year and uh tops from time to time has this problem sort of show up well that's for another day though uh tops made scratch off games very similar to what they did in 70 and 71 there were five brewers, uh, and they all had different people on the little card with them. The Lascano had two different packs. I don't, the other brewers didn't. Uh, two brewers made uh, the Supers, which is an oversized card. Fifteen brewers were on top stickers. They were made for an album. The baseball card world exploded this year with the arrival of Fleer and Donruss. Now, Topps finally had lost a monopoly they had enjoyed since 1955, Bowman. That was the last time they actually had competition, um, for the most part. I mean, <clears throat> they made a lot of errors. I mean, I'm talking about Flair and Donners here. They made a lot of an errors, and usually they corrected them. It's so much that it was suspicious that maybe it wasn't done, done on purpose. And these were super hot at the time. It's, they've cooled off a lot since then, but... Uh, there were some errors that were pretty egregious and some that ended up being pretty rare uh, and worth a lot of money, at least at the time. Like I said, it's cooled off since. I'm aware of two Flair cards uh, that were Brewer errors and three Donner's ones. Uh, Drake's is a food product card with a Cooper on one. All-Star Game programs had small cards that you could cut out yourself. Seven brewers in there. Flair made star stickers that looked a lot like cards, but they were stickers. There were uh, six brewers on those. Uh, they put stickers in with card packs, too. Uh, I'm talking Flair. Um, there were four different brewer ones. The Pepsi Fan Club was a kid's deal you know, to get discount tickets. Molitor was on a promo card that I believe was printed with the tickets the the tickets were for i think six games i was in it one time uh, for one year i think there were six tickets and you got them you know like i said for cheap and it came in a sheet and you tore up yourself even if you didn't use go to all the games and didn't use them all it was still a good deal plus they had a like a day you could come there if you were in the pepsi kid club or whatever and the, some players would come and kind of talk about baseball to the 
fans that would show up on that special day. Uh, my letter was on the card, of course, for the Brewers Pepsi Fan Club. Permographic credit cards. They have four Brewers, but I'm not sure how these were sold. They are not actually credit cards. They just look like them. Squirt Soda had two Brewers on those, and I believe those were in the grocery stores, attached or stuck into the um, cartons or whatever, just the six packs of Squirt bottled soda. Kellogg's had four Brewers in their cereal boxes. Promo discs are still around. Uh, Cooper is on one. It had to be around this time that a joke was played on Bob McClure. I guess he liked to come early on Sundays and sit in the bleacher bathrooms where it was nice and cool and peaceful and read the paper. A couple teammates found out and decided to trap him in there. There was a flagpole rope that barely reached the door and he wrapped it around there with tension, you know, pulling the rope and pulling the pole over to tie the door shut. Uh, and because of the tension, the guy inside, McClure, could not get out. <laughs> Somehow, after about an hour of training, he got out. Uh, he was chasing fly balls later, and a bleacher fan told him that she had a Polaroid of the culprits and would trade him the picture for a Robin Yount signed ball. So he went and got a ball, got Robin to sign it, gave it to her, and found out that it was Mike Caldwell and Reggie Cleveland. I'm sure he got revenge. Um, apparently, Mike was a big practical joker and a big believer in baseball's unwritten rules. That'll come up later too. Well, 1982, it came together. The Brewers finally made it to the World Series and lost. And we haven't been back since. Tops made 30 cards and OPG was good for 13. Uh, Tops had a traded issue uh, with one Brewer in it. Couldn't miss out getting a Rob Picciolo card that year. Well, Harvey Keane, a native of Milwaukee and a very good player in his day, uh, had been the team's hitting coach since 1971, but he replaced Buck Rogers partway through the year when they had been underperforming. The team added Don Sutton at the trade deadline, probably the best deadline deal they ever had, maybe tied with getting a CC Sabathia years later. Robin Yelt was MVP of the league. Pete Vukovic was a Cy Young winner. Paul Molitor moved again, now he's the third baseman. And uh, he did great, along with uh, Gorman Thomas, who tied for the home run title. Uh, Fingers was great again, uh, but was hurt for the playoffs. Ugh, that would have made the difference. Everyone thought this awesome team would have a lot more chances, but this was the only World Series that they ever played in. We thought the club had a nucleus that would repeat over and over. Of course... We'll talk about that too, but uh, back to just collecting, Tops and OPG made stickers, uh, 10 Brewers. All-Star program cards uh, were made with nine Brewers. Uh, Drake's again had a Cooper card. Fingers, Cooper, and Larry Heisel are on disc cards. Of course, Larry hadn't really played in the last few years, but whatever. Uh, Fleur made team stickers. Fleur made 10 Brewers in those. Kmart put out its own set of cards and put Raleigh on one. You know, I met Raleigh once. He was very nice. I had my mustache curled up just like him, and he said, nice mustache. And I said, thanks, you too. Kellogg's had three Brewers on those. Um, local and mm, call it semi-local police departments... <clears throat> had cards made for them for the first time. They were given away by cops at, you know, a few at a time so kids could feel comfortable talking to cops. Uh, I wouldn't say they're great, but they're interesting. They all have their own uh, police department stamp on them. So if you want to get all the different police department cards, there's a heck of a lot of them. But, uh, Permographics again made credit cards that look like credit cards but are not real credit cards. Uh, they made some regular and gold versions of All Stars, Cooper, and Yount. And a regular version of 
but I'll a regular and a gold version of Finkers and Cooper. Squirt Soda made two brewers again this year. 7-Eleven Cups made players for different regions. Raleigh Fingers was on one. The Milwaukee Journal often made brewer pictures or something made to be collected, but they're usually on newsprint, usually not color or poor color, and usually crappy, and no one would save it. Insight Magazine was a sort of better quality news magazine inserted into the Sunday paper, and these were worth cutting out and saving. I don't have any currently. I, I do have a couple of press photos from uh, Gorman Thomas and Don Money for what that's worth. Well, that's 81 and 82. Uh, 83 and 84, of course, would be next. We'll talk about what's going on out there. And it gets even a little nuttier, but arguably funner. See you next time.